Greetings and salam, this is Dan Bomey, um, Yahweh Din for the Messianic Sanhedrin, as well as the leadership of part of the Bethesda Cyber Messianic Congregation, which is a Natsarai school. Greetings and shalom to y'all. My uh, message for the day is called, um, Are You Ignoring Yahweh or, or Elohim? Based on Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1 where I'm reading, this is quoted from the Aramaic plain English. Because of this we indeed that we are indebted that we should at be at all times more attentive to whatever we have heard, lest we fail. For if a word is spoken by angels was established and everyone who heard it violated it and received their reward by justice. Okay, that's verse one and verse two. Um Nobody likes to be ignored, you know. Um, any parent knows that. <laughs> children put on their Iggy button, as I like to call it, and they don't always pay attention. We too are children in our own way. Our children often reflect what we do to our father, okay. I have children who ignore me, okay. They choose to walk their own way to do everything and not get to know their father in reality. The thing is, we too, even in my own life, have walked away, don't always listen to what, what Abba is trying to say to me. And we need to become more attentive for as sure as kings were even judged by this word, so are we as individuals. Um, fortunately, you know, uh, to be honest, we should admit that we're, we're overlooking others when, when when we do it you know admit that that yeah okay i was ignoring you you know we all have these moments where we too ignore people um someone's talking to us and and they just ramble on and on and on and you kind of like switch them off and pretend that you're listening and it's like uh-huh uh -huh. oh excuse me back up what was that you just said oh okay yeah yeah uh -huh, uh -huh. and we switch them off we don't really pay attention to what they say switching off our father abba elohim can have serious consequences. King Manessa learned this the hard way. He disregarded and he didn't listen to what Yahweh was telling him. And according to Second Chronicles chapter 33, um, we find that when King Manessa um, became king, he became involved with idol worship, uh, sorcery, divination, according to verses 3 and 6. Um, Yahweh spoke to him and the people of Yahuda or Judah, all right, and they, but they also ignored him, and as a result, Yahweh allowed the um, Assyrians to defeat the wayward king, and captivity got Manasseh's attention. Being hauled away out of your palaces, away from your thing, really can get your attention. Captivity, you know, it, it caused him though the good part to repent, and he removed these pagan practices from out of the land and uh, built an altar to Elohim himself. When we dis 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 just ignore, sorry, <laughs> when we ignore Yahweh, um, we forget that he's the very source of our blessing. Instead, we live as if we have the uh, right to everything that goes around there. We There's a spirit of self-entitlement that is out there. I have to have everything. We hear the doctrine of prosperity. God wants to bless you. God wants to bless you. Pray for your Cadillac, pray for your big mansion, pray for your multi-million dollar job. God wants to bless you, God wants to bless you. But there's a price tag in behind the blessing. If we do not serve our master the way that he expects us, do not ask for all these great things. And if you get these great things in spite of your lifestyle and you do not repent, you have just sold yourself out. And the scripture warns us that there will come a time where he says, you got your reward, you got what you asked for. There's nothing left in the bin for you. We should lay our treasures not to things in this world. Our market prosperity shouldn't be anything in this world. Our prosperity should be measured against that which is in heaven, against Elohim's standard of honesty and truthfulness. We can say the law versus grace, the law is abolished, but if we are not living the lifestyle according to what our father Abba has taught us, or set out in his edicts, or even set by example, are the one we call Jesus, the one we call Yeshua HaMashiach, the one which we set the standard by, kept Torah. There's his example. 
You say you want to do things Jesus' way. Maybe you should read the scriptures and find out exactly, historically, physically, emotionally, and, and scripturally, what Yeshua really lived like. We have this edict, painting picture, that he's a blonde-haired, blue-eyed person. Truth is coming up today. He wasn't. He was Jewish. He was dark-haired. He probably was more like five foot something. He was not of great stature. He didn't stand taller than any man. He wasn't tall, dark, and handsome. He didn't have any particular distinguishing marks. He wasn't out there. He wasn't a politician. He didn't have that Jimmy Carter smile. Nothing about him at all appealed to anybody else. Yet there was something when he spoke with the words that even the Pharisees had to admit. This man does not speak like ordinary men. This man speaks to us, one having an authority. When Father speaks to us, he speaks to us with an authority. My children will tell you, when I speak, there's a voice that tells them that I am serious. There's a moment when I say, Kia, can you do this? And she'll say, yes, Father, no, Father. But when I say, Kia, do this, she knows. Even today, I have something in mind. There's something there. And she will do it without question, without reservation. Each one of my children, in spite of themselves, I come up with that voice, will listen because they know, they understand. <clears throat> we take charge and make decisions according to our own pursuit and desires, what we want, what we want to do in our lives. But we need to take an existence, something else into our existence. We need something that have a better measurement, and that is that we are here to glorify Elohim himself. When we never find, when we do not glorify Elohim, when we do not serve our purpose, when we do not do what Father is asking us, what He does not prompt us to do, if He's calling us to prayer and we do not pray, if He's telling us to teach and we do not teach, if He calls us to cry out, we do not cry out, we will never find peace because He is, because of our lives, we cannot be fulfilled without our Father being there. The truth is, even if we choose to live without the Father's direction, and we do not bend our will to Elohim himself, we will still be held accountable for him. This doctrine of law versus grace is leading people to hell. There is a way that seems right unto man, but then thereof is death. Grace does not abolish the law. Grace complements the law. If we live truly in our Master's light, if we follow the teachings of Yeshua, our Mashiach, and we keep in His pattern, we understand that the Torah is a guide, a master, a teacher. It's there to instruct us, to guide us, to measure us. You can say, I am above the law. You can live by grace. But if the speed limit says 60 kilometers and you're doing 90, there's going to be a set of Christmas tree lights in your rear view mirror, and you're going to hear funny noise coming across. And you will get a ticket. And you can look at that police officer and say, I'm not in the law. I'm above I'm above the law. I'm not part of the law. I'm part of grace. And it won't make any difference. You can plead your case in the court in front of a judge and it won't make a difference. The whole scenario is the whole situation is that we must follow our master's teachings. We must have the grace of Elohim in our lives, and we will keep Torah. He will ask us what we did with the opportunities of our life. He's provided us with ample gifts and ample opportunities to use these gifts, and yet we continue to ignore it, to walk away, not share. Oh, I can't share with that person. They don't keep Torah. So what? We're still required to preach to them. We're still required to, required to, to live our lives accordingly, to show them the patterns. I always tell my kids, my children, my blessed lambs, if you want to be different, be different. Many people out there have heard me say that expression. Instead, we still say the same old, same old. You say you're a messianic, but I don't see anything in your life. You're still full of bitterness, hatred, and judgment. Live a life according to what Yeshua was. I don't agree with your lifestyle. I don't accept your lifestyle. You want to eat pork? Go ahead and eat pork, but don't ask me to eat pork. You want me to respect you eating pork? Then please respect me not eating it. You don't want to commit adultery. You don't want to commit sin. 
If you believe in keeping Shabbat, keep Shabbat. It's not your concern that they don't. But when they see the light and make sense out of what you are doing, and they want to service Yahweh and Hamalim himself, they will turn to you and say, show us. Is it not written that at the end of time they will grab a hold of the believer's talit and say, show us your God? Why? Why do we worry about it? Live your life in perspective. Do not chase after them. Do not torment them. Simply live your life before Elohim and you will be at peace. Many people complain that they are so aggravated with the way this world is. Well, do something different. Live a life according to the Torah. And you will find peace and happiness. And when people see the peace and happiness, they'll ask you why. And you say, because I have served my father. I serve the living Elohim. I serve Yeshua, my Mashiach. Come, follow him and you will find the paths. You will find a life that is so peaceful and restful. Some people ignore God by essentially removing him from their lives. Have you removed Elohim from your life? Is he no longer a pattern, a pattern, what's most important? Do you take that time? Daniel took three days, three times a day to pray to him, to thank him, to bless him, to magnify him, to glorify him. How many times did you take? Five seconds? No. You're too busy. Some remove him from by doing what things which are forbidden by the Torah. Oh, well, the world's doing it. Oh, don't worry about it. You can have a little bacon on that. I ask you people. Is the scripture truth? Then we should follow what is written. What a set out pattern. It doesn't matter what other churches teach, what your brothers and sisters, your neighbors are doing. You know very well as a child, when you looked at your mother and father and said, Sally's doing that, what you were told. Do you think you're going to be any different than your father when you appear before him in the judgment day? It will not be any different. If Sally jumped off the bridge, would you jump off the bridge, your mother says? Your father goes, Oi, is this what I told you? Is this what I taught you? No, my father. Go the way of the father. Go the way of the heart. Go away according to the scriptures. And if any man teaches you otherwise, that man you should flee from. Do not waste your breath to him. He is sent by the enemy. Any woman teaches you otherwise, flee from her. She's a harlot. She sold herself to this slavery. She wants to be free and run naked in the streets. Let her go. She is not worth you. Gentlemen, find yourself a decent woman. One whose heart is after Yahweh himself. Women, find yourself a man whose heart serves Yahweh himself. There is no other path. Nothing else will matter. You are not happy because you are not serving in God's way. Either way, no matter what you do, you will answer to him in judgment. Friend, you don't want to pay the cost of your life without Yahweh. If you've been ignoring your Maker, now is the time to start paying attention to Him. Acknowledge your disobedience. Humble yourself before Yahweh Himself and start listening to Him today. Until next time, this is Daniel saying Shalom. Hamalchem.